Hello, I'm Mark Hader, and I'm here to introduce you to the stage play I wrote titled Little Dizzy. The storyline involves a singer-songwriter from Seattle who, while headed to Austin, ends up in a remote town in West Texas that's not even on the map. What you're getting ready to see is a non-sequential set of short clips from a video of a handful of actors who read parts for a cast of 15. The two main leads are supposed to be in their mid-twenties. However, the two actors reading the parts are somewhat older. But boy, they're good. So here's a small taste of Little Dizzy. For a community theater representative who would like to see the entire script, contact info will be in the credits at the end. <sighs> Let's see this thing. This is a poem I helped to write about the tree. The only tree in Little Dizzy. It's the most important point in town. It's our meeting place. The place that lets you know where you are. And it's my favorite thinking place. That's why I came up with this poem called Little Dizzy's the Tree by Joyce Kilmer and Tammy Blessing. Look, all I need to find is a mechanic with a tow truck. Would there happen to be either one of those in this town? By the way, what's the name of this hellhole? Didn't you pass the sign on the way in? There was no sign on the way in. Really? Hmm. Well, I'll take that up with the mayor. By the way, you're in Little Dizzy. Little Dizzy. You know, that sounds appropriate. Dizzy. It's hmm. Little Dizzy. And there's a comma after the little. Well, of course there is. Excuse me for omitting the comma in my pronunciation because there certainly wasn't a comma on the sign. Remember, listeners, our goal today is that no more than 10% of us wake up sick tomorrow morning. <gasps> You're not having a stroke, are you? I don't do strokes. Oh, look, look, I'm sorry. I'm just not myself, okay? You're not yourself. Yeah. Well, I sure hope not, because the make-believe you is about to really tick me off. We're still two days away from our annual Bob Wills Day Festival, in which we'll be celebrating Bob's highly exaggerated contribution to country music with his creation of Country Swing. Yee-haw! For the life of me, I can't understand the gall of you men. Most of you just come in here to drink coffee and mess up the restroom. Yeah, we're, we're animals, all right, but it's important that you know I did not do what was done in that place. Maddie, darling, in a little bit, I'm gonna call Tess Trueheart for traffic and weather. Oh, Daddy, please, I beg you, let's not do this today. So let's go back one step. You're headed to Austin to perform on some big TV show. Uh, it's called Austin Live, and it's not real big. Uh, it's pretty big, but I'm not big. Is Maddie short for something that sounds better, like, you know, say, Madeline? Wow. Now who's the perceptive one? <laughs> yes, I'm Madeline Scott, but the townsfolk call me Maddie. And you? Uh, I'm not from here, so I'm calling you Madeline. Knock yourself out. By the way, why don't you answer the phone? Me? No, the idiot laying under the table. Yes, you. Uh, Dragon Lady's Bar and Grill, we don't do takeout. Uh, who is this? Uh, just a guy waiting for a mechanic. Interesting. Oh, would you tell the girl in there that I need Tess Trueheart? Hmm. Um, he wants Dick Tracy's girlfriend. Good morning, Bosco. What are you doing with my daughter? Hey, she's been doing it to me. Look, sir, my name is Rob. Rob Wilson. I'm assuming your daughter is Tess. I'm not doing anything with her, sir. Uh, she just made me breakfast, and now I'm waiting for the mechanic to show up. Molly? No, sir, Rob Wilson. I'm waiting for the mechanic. Molly is the mechanic. Your mechanic is Molly? Crap! I should be leaving town by, what, mid-afternoon? Well, that's not happening. By the way, Dizzy is full of desperate people who don't give two hoots for who you say you are. It's too much of a coincidence for you not to be Bob Wills. So in I'm sorry, Bob. I can't do that. Tess Trueheart, get your happy self over here. <laughs> not happening. So tell me, Bob, why don't you make it easy on yourself and perform for us live on the air? Who knows? Maybe you'll impress one of the cute girls in town. <laughs> I hate to shock you, but Little Dizzy is not, and I'm fairly sure never was on any map. 
When I stumbled into this town, I had no idea you were even here. After my Dodge died, I started walking east because I had driven from the west and knew there was nothing behind me. Uh... Now don't you get it, Bob? It's you who put the town on the map back in June of 36. Good golly, what, what should I know about Molly? You don't need to know a thing about her. All you need to know about is your car. Pardon me, your van. Stay on that subject and she probably won't leave you in tears. Please, I beg you, let's have one serious moment where you explain to me what is going on in this ridiculous ghost of Bob Wills thing. Nobody in town seems to be a candidate for Jeopardy, but they possess a hint of logic, don't they? Maddie, I wasn't expecting you. This must be Bob. Oh, how nice. Wait just a minute. Now, Maddie, tell me what you're bringing to the potluck. Hold the phone, Jeanette. Look at that. Whoa. Oh, there's two of them. They're, they're just kind of floating above the uh, ground. Son of a firearm. I'm looking at some Arphalites. But my van was practically on the road. You didn't have to drive all the way to New Mexico uh, looking for it. Mr. Wheels, the only thing keeping you alive right now is your name. <laughs> if I hear one more word from you, well, I don't care if you're the reincarnation of Elvis Presley. I will kill you. Good night, Madeline girl. Yeah, like, I'm gonna be able to sleep tonight. Well, if you have any trouble, come see me. You know, I might as well tell you now, I, I don't like wild-caught creatures, except maybe fish. And I've made it a point never to eat anything that was cooked by a lunatic. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Zelda. You haven't been around long enough to know the taste of everybody's swill. Why aren't you the judge? I was last year. I got so sick that Daddy had to put me in the back of his pickup and haul me to the emergency room in Lubbock. Yeah, a few times I do lose sight of the fact that she's gone and I find myself talking to her. But I get past it. I get a little better every week or so. Which is rather sad, you think about it. What you're doing tonight will stay with you forever. You will tell your grandchildren about the time you climbed a water tower with a, a male escort. Of course, I, I wouldn't go into detail about uh, why we're up here. Male escort? The four categories are presentation, taste, flavor, tenderness, P-T-F-T. I put some crackers up here in case you need to get the vile taste out of your mouth. Any questions? Uh, can you get your hands on some more crackers? No. So tell me about the Marfalites. It is one word, isn't it? Marfalites? I'm not going to tell you about the Marfa lights. Uh. I'm going to show you what they look like. Uh. They look a lot like little dizzy lights. Here, look out on the horizon. Them talking to you is like when I was with Rebecca. In their hearts, they know it's foolish to think you're Bob Wills, but you just kind of landed on them at a remarkable time. They're just pretending a dream. About these four categories, I'm not even going to ask you to explain the difference between taste and flavor. But as for presentation, it's stew in a dang cup. They all look like crap without the shingle. So I'm not going to write... Maddie, lovely as ever. Rob, I'm sorry about you stepping into all this. Are you ready for what's going to hit you tomorrow? Sheriff, it is good to hear someone talk sense in this town. It seems Jeffrey Hedge, while in the state of inebriation, got upset at me for taking away his car keys and making him walk home. So he borrowed Flo's car and drove to the water tower where he painted, well, you can imagine what he painted. Shucks? <laughs> yes, Rob. He wrote, shucks. He's a sad drunk, you know. Yeah, he is. Wonder what causes that. Yeah, uh, pardon me, gentlemen. Uh, this is fascinating stuff, but it, it's been a long day, so I think I'll uh, go ahead and hit the sack. Wait a minute. This couch is my sack. 
So if uh, you guys don't mind... Uh, Get out of here, Stuart. We'll take care of this. Mandy, darling, if you'll go into my duffel bag and find something for both you and Rob to wear, I'll be right back. Uh, what's that supposed to mean? It's going to be a scary night, Guitar Man. Oh, it'll show up, I promise you. Yes, sirree, Mr. Wills. This town will leave no turn unstoned to locate your miserable set of wheels. And before you can quote the Constitution, Molly will have that thing purring like a Dodge with water in the gas tank. Now let's go to the tree. I can cuff you or you can come peacefully. Which will it be? Just one more thing, Stuart. Do I have to eat anything? Do I look that cruel to you? Let's go out amongst them. So the town is called Little Dizzy with a comma, and your slogan is not this year. So each spring, what, the town votes on whether or not to pull up stakes and go to California? Or Moving what? right along, I've got that rascal, Mayor Peggy Haskell, with me this morning, and she'll tell you how to handle your potluck dish and your roadkill stew entry. Uh, I mean, wild kill stew entry. Dime's difference, if you ask me. Go ahead. Last question. What would I have to do to get out of this? Sleep with the town's mechanic. Oh, gosh. You know, I would have listened so much better had you led with that comment. Remember, listeners, our goal today is that no more than 10% of us wake up sick tomorrow morning. <gasps> Rob, Bob, there's not one thing that's happened between us that has been planned. It's like we both stepped into an episode of Game of Thrones. You know, that makes no sense. Uh, which episode? Shut this is breaking news. I'll fill you in when I return, assuming I make it back. You know, if I don't, all I can say is, don't weep for me, little Dizzy, because I think I saw a white van go by. Are you serious about me getting sick? Uh, do you think it'll really be that bad? No. I really don't think it will. I know it will. From what little information I've gathered from you, you're going to go down like a camel on ice. But I'll be here for you, except for your time in the bathroom. In fact, I think we should just put you outside. We could go on tour. You could sing, and then we could do a stand-up comedy routine together. You'd be the straight guy. You know, I haven't been this tempted since a guy tried to sell me a timeshare in Atumpka, Oklahoma. I would appreciate it if you'd tell me how on earth you got to this town and ended up being the sheriff of an all-white county in West Texas. I know what you're insinuating, and I don't like it one bit, Mr. High and Mighty Bob Wills. I'm just messing with you. Coming here from Seattle, I can see your reluctance to revisit. I never thought I'd end up here, but it turned out good. And believe it or not, you stumbling into town has made things much better. Well, I guess we could fight over it if you want. Hell no, do I look like a tough guy? I just thought you might do me a solid. Oh, wow, I feel like we're cellmates. Look, Pete, the good news is uh, the wild kill stew had nothing to do with this year's outbreak. Chris and Madeline are both at home. I would like to say that uh, one of them is looking after the other, but uh, this isn't a perfect world, people. No, they're, they're both sick as a dog, or dogs. Keeping in mind that dogs don't sweat. I'm now going to introduce our 28th and last entry of the evening. I think that I shall never see a poem as lovely as the tree. Its hungry roots lay in rock. Soy would be better. But that's not what it's got. Upon whose ground the snow has lain, which is good because it seldom rains. Towns are made up of people like you and me. But only God could make little Dizzy's the tree. She still darling. What am I doing here? I don't know. What do you want to do? Guitar man.